Hello there. Uh, welcome to Kretain Accounting. Uh, we want to look at a topic, uh, but it's the formal bookkeeping topic. Uh, it's a topic that we want to look at, and uh, this is our question one. Uh, this question has got 15 marks. Uh, let's take notes. Uh, the question is 15 marks and uh, requires us to spend on average about nine minutes on this question. Uh, so uh, maybe uh, we can start by uh, trying to uh, uh, define uh, what we mean by informal bookkeeping. So informal bookkeeping uh, uh, generally is, is exercised in an informal business and the informal business uh, uh, refers to uh, uh, those uh, economic activities that are not registered, which mainly include self-employed, uh, small business owners, uh, street vendors, ETC. Uh, those are some of the ex uh, examples and uh, mainly they operate without licenses or permits. So in those businesses, that's when you see uh, informal uh, bookkeeping taking place. So by informal bookkeeping, we, we, are, we are saying uh, is the bookkeeping that is being exercised without abiding by the accounting principles. Uh, remember, we've got those accounting principles, that's the GAAP, uh, that has to be uh, uh, followed. So in an informal bookkeeping, there is no such, uh, and even uh, the main basic principle of double entry is not being exercised in such uh, informal bookkeeping. So this is what we have in the explanation in terms of uh, what uh, informal bookkeeping. And the question that we have is here, we can uh, uh, go through the question. The question reads, read the case study below and answer the questions that follow. Uh, and uh, in that uh, the text that we are given, Estella recently became unemployed. She decided to use the hobby of making a bit of jewelry into a small business at a local flea market that runs every, every Sunday. The cost of a table in the free market is 450 rands per table. She decided to employ Tandy to help out in the store as it is not always possible for her to be there. Stella pays Tandy 300 rands per day. Stella has found a supplier that she buys the beads from at a very reasonable price. Uh, it costs her 35 rands to make one necklace. Uh, she uses a markup of 100%. Markup is 100%. So on the first question, it reads, give one reason why this is an informal business. Uh, I think we have uh, explained in terms of what we mean by an informal business. Uh, basically, this informal business, uh, we, we, we were emphasizing that it uh, operates in, in the informal sector. And uh, the main classification of informal business comes from the basis of it being not registered. It's not a registered business. So uh, we see that even taxes are not charged for an informal business because it's not registered. So uh, those are some of the reasons that you can bring uh, when uh, we see this type of a question. So here we can just uh, maybe uh, write the response there. Uh, so uh, one of the reasons that uh, uh, it is not uh, it is not registered, it is not registered to pay taxes. Uh, it is it is not registered it is not registered to pay taxes. So uh, this comes as one of the uh, reasons. Uh, and then uh, we can also bring other reasons like uh, no, no formal accounting system is in place. No formal accounting system is in place. Uh, no formal accounting uh, system is in place. Uh, so uh, this is what we have. So uh, this question just is asking for one reason. So you can pick any reason that we uh, we can put there and any other that can be appropriate. So this is what we have on 1.1. Then we go to 1.2. Calculate the same price of one necklace. Then uh, we can go back there to see uh, what we have in terms of the question. So the explanation, uh, the explanation of that one, uh, if you come here, uh, we are told that it uses a markup of 100, 100% uh, percent. remember. Uh, the formula is that we say uh, our cost price, uh, we add our markup, uh, we add our markup to get our, sorry, uh, here, there, it's uh, to get our selling price there. So we are saying uh, equals our selling price. So what do we have there? Uh, our cost price is always 100%. Then the markup depends on the question. Uh, so the cost price is always 100%. So we are saying uh, 100%. Then we add uh, the markup that we are giving in the question is 100% again. So we have 100 again. So uh, then we get our selling 
uh, price. So the same price is the one that is being asked for. So if you say 100, uh, uh, 100 plus 100, you get 200%. So uh, therefore, our same price is representing uh, 200%. Uh, percent. So uh, here we are told that uh, the cost price, we are given the cost price there is 35 francs. So we can just uh, make a proportion there whereby now we are saying uh, uh, 35 35 is equals to our hundred percent, and then the figure that we are looking for is the same price, which is two hundred percent. This is percent. Uh, this is percent. So here we have got two hundred uh, percent. Uh, there we have got two hundred percent there. So uh, that's what we have there. Two hundred uh, percent. So uh, this is a question mark. Uh, so it means uh, we want to find this figure uh, here. So we can just make a proportion by, there by saying uh. Uh, what we don't have is 200, so then we make it a numerator. This is what we don't have. And what we have is 35, then we, we, we put it as a denominator. Then you multiply by the given figure. Uh, uh, the, uh, sorry, uh, here we uh, we made a mistake here. Uh, we are here. What, what we don't have is 200%, and what we have is 100%. Because 100% is the one that we have for 35. So uh, what we have there is 100%. So we're going to put our 100 there. Here's our denominator. Then we multiply by uh, the given figure, which is at 35. Then we say times 35 over 1. So this is the uh, calculation that we can go and summarize there in our answer section, 200 over 100 times 35. So uh, we are saying uh, 200 over 100. Uh, of course, this, these are percentages. Uh, and then we multiply by uh, 35 over 1. Uh, then uh, if you do that, the answer that you are going to get there is 70, uh, 70, uh, 70 runs. So this is becomes our, our same plan. So this is what we have. Then uh, on the next question, you can go back and check there. Uh, the next question is say calculate the total income if, she's, if uh, she sold 90 nickels. And already now we have got the selling price, which is 70. So uh, it's now simple. We are just saying the 90 necklace that we have, we multiply by 70 per necklace. Uh, then we get uh, the total uh, the total income. So uh, we can just go there. Uh, we are now saying uh, we are now on 1.3. 1.3. So uh, for 90 necklace, uh, basically what we are saying there, we are saying 90. Uh, times our uh, seventy per necklace get the, uh, the total income, so we get our uh, six thousand three hundred rands. So uh, this is what we have according to this uh, question. That is one point three. Uh, so you can go there now in this, at one point four. One point four is saying calculate the profit teller made for the day. Calculate profit teller made for the day. Now we come here. Uh, we, we for the day now, uh, remember, uh, for the day we are given the figures here. Uh, we are given cost of a table at the pay market is uh, uh, 450. So this uh, is represented our rent. Uh, 450 is our rent. And then uh, we are also given this figure, which is uh, 300 per day, uh, which is a Stella pays 300 per day. So this is representing the, uh, the wage that uh, a Stella is paying to Tandy. And then uh, we are also having our our cost price 35 uh, to make one necklace. Uh, so remember, uh, we can just use uh, the the format that we uh, we we use in the income statement, whereby uh, we are saying uh, we start with the selling selling price selling value. So we say selling uh, selling uh, price uh, there uh, in terms of the value, or we just say selling value there. Selling value here. Uh, then we subtract the cost price here. So when you subtract the cost price, you are going to get your gross profit. Then uh, uh, when you get your gross profit, uh, you subtract the expenses. You subtract the expenses. Uh, when you subtract the expenses, remember when you are, when you are putting brackets, you are subtracting. Then you get your uh, your profit. Get your net profit uh, or uh, the net profit to come here. So this is the profit figure that we want to calculate, which is uh, this one. So we're just going to go through this form, uh, format. So our selling value, remember, uh, our selling value, 
uh, we calculated it uh, there on 1.3 when we calculate total income, which is uh, sold to net necklace for one day. So uh, this is uh, for one day, and also here we have got one day for 1.4. So uh, if you go to our other section, you'll see that uh, uh, we found uh, 6,300 there. When we multiplied, uh, it was 6,300. So this is the one that we are going to use as our selling value. Uh, 6,300, so basically here now we are saying uh, 6,300 is here. Then our cost price, we've got 35, uh, 35 uh, per one necklace. It's when they are now 90, we are saying 90 times 35. Uh, then we multiply the two, 90, plus, 90 times 35, we get 2,100, uh, 2,150. So here now we are saying 2,150 and then we subtract. And then uh, for our gross profit, we are now saying uh, 6,300 minus 2,150, it you gets you know, 3,150. Then for expenses now, for our expenses, uh, we've got the rent, uh, that is 400 per day, uh, that is being paid for the table, this is the rent, 400, uh, so we've got 450. And then we add the wages uh, that is uh, being paid to Tandu, which is 300 per day, so we add the 300, so we get what, uh, 750. So this is our expenses. So we have got 750 here, then we subtract. Uh, and then I've said 2,150 minus three, minus 750 there, we are going to get 2,400. So this becomes our, our profit. So this is uh, what we are just going to summarize there on, in our working. Right, uh, we are now on 1.4. Uh, 1.4, uh, you can just come here. Uh, let's see, uh, sales, start with sales here. Uh, we start with the sales and uh, get our sales, we say 90 times 70. Then we are going to get to 6,300. And then uh, believe that we now have cost of sales. Uh, cost of sales and uh, it's 90 times 35. 90 times 35 there, and you get your uh, 2,150. And we are saying we are subtracting it from that figure. And then we get our our gross profit here. And the gross profit uh, that we are having 2,150. And obviously now we have got our expenses. Uh, we have got our expenses. So now we have expenses. And our expenses we got seven fifty. We said uh it's a uh, four fifty plus three hundred. So it's four fifty plus uh, three hundred, and we got seven seven fifty. So uh we are subtracting again here. Get the final figure that we want, which is uh two thousand four hundred. So this becomes our our profit. So this is what we have in terms of this uh, uh, 1.4. Then we go to the next one, it's 1.5. Uh, uh, 1.5, you can go back there to go through it. Uh, 1.5 reads, uh, the business has been running smoothly for six months. Candy has decided to start making earrings. She plans to sell this, uh, this for her own gain at Stella's store without your knowledge. Is this the right thing for Tandy to do? Uh, give a reason for your answer. Uh, obviously, it's not a good uh, thing to do uh, because uh, Tandy is uh, doing a, a, an ethical activity by uh, selling uh, those uh, earrings. It's going to affect the business of Tandy. So uh, basically, the reason, uh, the, the response that you can give, is, give there is no, and then you give an explanation of why you are saying no. Uh, uh, but basically, you can just summarize and saying she needs to inform Stella of her intention. She needs to uh, inform Stella for her intention. So this is the reason that you can give there. Uh, so uh, here, you can just say no. Uh, no. And then you state the reason beneath that, uh, that she needs. Uh, she needs to inform Stella. Uh, up, uh, of your intention, uh, of your intention, 
So uh, this is what we have in terms of 1.5. So this marks the end of our question uh, on uh, this uh, informal uh, bookkeeping. Uh, so uh, let's stay tuned for more videos to come. Those who have not even subscribed, please subscribe and share. I will meet again in the next video. With that, I'm signing out.